Welcome, I'm going to show you how to integrate simple procedural walk inside of your Unreal project. So let's go ahead and start Unreal. I'm going to select a new game and create a new game based on the third person template. I'm going to name it Demo, which is very creative. So here we are in the third person template and we're going to activate the plugin by clicking on edit plugins searching for the plugin inside of the animation section so here it is simple procedural walk of course it's going to be here uh, assuming that you have purchased and downloaded the plugin already click on enabled and you will be prompted to restart the editor so let's do that now All right, so I'm going to animate a robot mesh that I've purchased. So first of all, let's bring it in and the content here. I'm going to copy the content of a robots folder, which now should be visible here. And here is my mesh. So if I double click it, we can see it. Here it is. I'm going to change an editor preference so that my tabs open always up here instead of an separate windows. To animate this mesh, we're going to need to create an animation blueprint for this skeleton. So let's go ahead and inside of here blueprints, let's right click under under animation, create a new animation blueprint with the skeleton of my mesh. I'm going to rename this to an MVP bot. Double click to open it. Right click here and type in mesh to get mesh space reference pose. Now drag from the component pose here and type simple and click on simple procedural walk. This will give you the animation node. Then connect these two remaining pins here. And as far as the nodes are concerned, we're done. I can compile and save. We get warnings on the simple procedural walk node because, well, we haven't entered any settings for it yet. So let's click on that and we can see here all the settings that can be put for this node. But at the moment, what interests us is to set the legs and the leg groups so that we can have a walk cycle here. We know our character here has got four legs, so let's click four times here on the plus sign so that we have four legs entries and I can expand those. And see here that for every leg I need to define a parent bone, which is basically where the leg starts from, and the tip bone, which is where the legs end. So the foot. And this is true for all of the four legs. To know which bones to use here and also which bone to use for the body bone, let's go ahead and go back to our mesh, click on skeleton, and now we can see the skeleton of our skeletal mesh. I'm going to enable some visuals here, clicking character, bones, all hierarchy, and also bones and bone names. It's a little messy, but you get the idea. So for the front legs, if I move a little closer, we can see that they start from this lower arm and then they go down to the hand end. So this is basically my front left leg here. We got the same one for the right leg and then for my back legs I see that the legs start from the bone named calf and they go down to foot end. This is true for both left leg and the right leg. All right finally I need my body bone. It's very important that your model has a pelvis which is in the center of your body. Um, you don't want it to be on the side like here on the end or on the front because then the rotation would result in some unexpected movements and uh, raising too much the model. So here you can see if I rotate it um, basically the center remains on the same spot. All right now that I know the names of my bones I can head back to my animation blueprint and input them here. So, my first front leg 
starts from lower arm L and goes down to hand L for my right front leg I have the same for my back left leg I have from calf until the foot and L and the same goes from my right one all right I compile and save I can also input my body bone here and we're getting closer so now what we have to do is to ensure that the offsets are correctly specified we do have like a warning here but don't worry about this one because we will get to it so the offsets basically are the offsets from the parent bones to where we want our feet to be it will become clear in a minute if I click on debug and then hit compile you can see that now we have some ray traces one for each leg and uh, the ray traces basically start from the parent bones so these ones these four ones and go vertically down and hit the ground this is where you want your feet to be located so if this is the position that simple procedural walk will use to set your foot as a starting point these obviously are not the position that you want so we need to move these in a way that they correspond to the position of the feet in the model but first we need to ensure that the axes of the model are correct so look at this coordinate system here you see a red axis going forward here on the model then we've got a green one which is the right hand side and then we got a blue one here which is the z-axis they are set already correctly they do correspond to the model forward so like the model is going in this direction and the red axis is in this direction if for any reason this wasn't correct you would need to change here the skeletal mesh forward axis setting from y to whatever it is in your model for example if it were to be x you would now have this coordinate system here which does not correspond to the model because the model is not facing in the red vector direction so let's bring it back to y all right so now we can start moving these ray traces with the offsets so let's move it forward by 40 and uh, left by 40 and compile and see where this goes oh it's lucky enough so you can now see that the ray trace corresponds to the foot position of this leg so let's do the same for the other four all right if i hit compile and save you can now see that my ray traces are pointing to the original feet position of the model we're almost there to be able to try the model what we still need to define here is the walk cycle which means which one of these legs are moving so unplanting and then planting so doing the step at the same time this being a big model i imagine one leg moving at a time so like this front left leg should move then this right one here then the back left then the back right in this uh, you know sequence we could have you know have these two legs like this front left one and the back right move and then the other two move but uh given the size of this model it seems more realistic that one leg moves at the time to do this we need to go back here and scroll down to walk cycle under leg groups and since i want every leg to move separately it means that every leg is going to have their own group so let's click four times here on leg groups open them up and every group is going to have only one leg as member what do we put here well these are the leg indices as the name says and the leg indices are nothing more than this little number here that appear every leg entry so this leg here has index zero and i want to keep the sequence so that's why i'm going to enter here so i've got zero one two and three i click on compile and save this defines my groups finally before we try this out i want to do 
couple of things. The first thing is that I want to change how high the step goes. This means how high the step is going to be on the ground when the step reaches its peak. And um, since the model is rather big, I'm going to put the 50 here. I'm going to keep these two distances for now. Um, and I'm going to explain what these are. So step distance forward defines how much the step is going to be you know, reaching forward in the forward axis or backwards. And since most models are not necessarily like square models like this one, but they might be longer than wider, then you can define a separate settings, which is step distance right, which basically means how wide is the step, you know, sideways. And uh, I'm going to increase a little bit these settings to 60 and put 60 here too, because this model is rather big. All right. I'm going to disable debug to avoid having noise and go back to my third person example map. Click on the third person character, click on edit third person, and now I'm going to substitute the mesh with my model here. And uh, in my viewport, I'm going to change the capsule and set the model right. So the capsule is, needs to be a little bigger, so I'm going to put, I don't know, Maybe not that large, something like this. And I'm going to move my mesh down. Remember that the capsule defines how your character moves inside of a world. So you want to adapt this um, consistently to how you want your character to move. And then finally, I'm going to use my newly created animation blueprint on the mesh. Now that we did all that, I can hit play and see my model in the world. Okay, and if I click forward and sideways, it's going to move. Of course, now it's not very realistic, but you can see it's already working. So let's fix this so that it looks way better than now. Let's go back to the third person character. I'm gonna move the boom of this camera a little further away so that we can see all of the model. But here it's really important that we check the character movement since it defines the acceleration, the speed, and so on of your character. What you want to have here is a slower walk speed. This is way too fast. So I'm going to put, you know, 250. And also I want to change my acceleration to be around 200 so that it doesn't go to from zero to max speed like uh, almost instantly. But we're not done yet. Um, what I also want here is to um, ensure that it rotates properly. So in my third person character defaults, I want to ensure that um, my use controller rotation yaw is disabled, as it should be by default. But then in my movement, I want to use controller desired rotation and not orient the rotation to movement. Also, I want my rotation to happen way more slower than this, so I'm going to put 60. Hit compile and save. And now if I try it out, and I rotate my mouse, you see that the character is going to slowly rotate in the direction that interests me. And if I move around, you can see that it can walk and adapt to the terrain properly. Still, this is not very convincing because it kind of is walking on itself. And uh, plus this little steps that it makes while you know readjusting are just not very realistic. So let's change these. First of all, I want to change something in the AnimBP here. If I re-enable um, the debug, there's something that I'd rather change here. I like the fact that my steps are wide enough, but um, they are not working because the model, the definition of the model itself, you can see here that it has the feet that are pretty much drawn inwards. And we would like to have these widen up so that we can have wider steps. This can easily be done by just changing the offsets. So instead of having the original offsets here, I'm going to put something uh, larger. So now if I compile, and save, you can see that I've changed basically the starting position of all feet. 
Well, you don't see it animated here, of course, but you can see that my desired position is where these little green squares are. And um, if I now hit, for example, play, you can see that my model now has wider feet. But I'm not done yet. The other thing that I wanted to change was the fact that steps weren't so short when the model is reassessing itself. So to change that, I can go here in the walk cycle and open advanced and change my minimum step duration from the default to, uh, let's put 0.35 and see how that looks like. I'm also going to disable debug to reduce the visual noise. And now let's play again. All right, so now when I move my model, it's way more realistic. I like the way it's positioning its feet and it adapts to the terrain, of course. And that's about it. So there are a lot of params you can play with and I'm just gonna show you one quickly, which is, you know, the bounce. Like right now it's bouncing a little bit when it walks, but if I were to exaggerate here, you know, and put it to, you know, two instead of 0.5 and have an interpolation speed, um, a body location interpolation speed to be quite faster. If I try it again, if I click on play now, you see that the character moves <laughs> in a ridiculous way. You don't want this body bounce by the way, but it's just to show you that you know you can play a lot with the settings that are available to you all right thanks for following through hope you enjoy